<laughs> Hi everyone, how are we? Um, did you enjoy the event that's uh, happened this evening? Uh, have you been keeping up with anything this evening? What are you drinking? What are you doing? Have you been watching the football? Go on, have you? Hey, Phil! Phil! Fancy seeing you here! Blue Nose! How you doing, mate? How you doing, Blue Nose? It's good to see you in the non-visual sense. Um, yeah. Does anyone see the football? Uh, l hello, mate, late Ming. Yes, yes. We're not late. There was a special event on which we Disco will can talk to you about. Um, oh, Disco's here. Yeah, Disco. Ah, oh, Phil saying hello to Blue Nose. That's good. No idea what just happened, Blue, Blue Nose says. Um, well, yeah, what has happened? I'll let Disco fill us in. You know, he goes, hi, yo, he's a. Uh, sent to this waiting for this go do, do, do. and this is when Instagram tells me something's gone wrong yay hey Westbrook, good evening good evening sir <clears throat> now um, many may gather um, that there's no beer behind me uh, this evening um, I, I have myself some pure calamine tea um, and some honey and some lemon. Um, this is not my pre-show cup of tea. This is my show cup of tea for tonight. Fair play. Um, right, mostly... Harry, you good to see your face popping in. Um, yeah, sorry to hear that you've not been too well this week, Left but are you feeling a bit better today? I'm, I'm feeling a bit better than what I've been. I've been sick since Sunday. Jesus, um, mate. Not COVID. Um, not COVID. Not not COVID. COVID. No, not COVID because, you know, we haven't got to that point um, in our celebritism of um, putting someone sick with COVID on live stream. We, we, haven't, we haven't sold out that much just yet. Um, but I've, we feel to, unless someone offers me a silly. No, 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 no. Anyway, yeah, so um, I haven't been well and I wasn't going to be on the show. Um, but on Friday, I changed my mind and said I would do it. That's the um, Super Trooper, uh, can you run? Uh, Phil, uh -huh. I'm drinking Oof by Fallen Con Brewing. It's a marble mild beer. Uh, can I, uh, and marble Fallen mild Acre. beer. Ooh. Yeah, um, kind honey and lemon shout. I feel sorry for myself. And weak drink ale. <laughs> well, I normally I would have said drink brandy because that's medicinal in it, but. Oh. Yeah. Nah. You know, no thanks. Whatever, I'm not, I, you know, 20 years ago, I'd been mugging you off and all that, saying, get on it. But if you're ill, you're ill. You can't do nothing about it. What can you do? But did you enjoy the football, though? Did that, did that perk you up in some ways? Yeah, I mean, I mean so catching the results and the highlights. I mean, I haven't followed the tournament as much as I'd like to. Yeah. Um, yeah. But... <laughs> But, you know, I've, I've kept up with it and watching the highlights as I do, um, mostly via YouTube. Um, I, and, you know, it, it's been great. It's been, you know, what I have would say, no team has truly given up in this tournament. Everyone is fighting to the last minute to just get the goals. Uh, what was that? Uh, Rasco or something... Rasco, do a COVID guess. I don't want my new phone getting a virus. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Thanks. So I just had to get, um, a new, just had to get another uh, cushion there because I noticed my beard was falling off the bottom of the screen. This saggy old sofa. <laughs> so I've uh, yeah, got a little um, booster seat. I mean, I'm six foot one. I don't really need a booster seat except for this bloody old sofa. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, Ke okay. Kevin. Uh, hello. Hello, Kevin. Um, oh, um, Blue Nose, are you still watching? Are you? What are you drinking? Are you, are you still mocking? Or what are you doing? Blue Nose, do you want to be on the show? Maybe. Or not. I don't know. If you're still watching, you just got your invite. Very most welcome. And then, mm. Do you know what? That football game was simultaneously mm. one of the dullest, most exciting <laughs> and competent performances I've seen from an England team in a long, long time. I was like... Um, it just passing about at the end. It was just like a training game, it, but it was brilliant. It was like they were just all at it. It was. I was shocked. I was shocked, mate. I was shocked. Yeah, yeah. 
I, you know what? I, completely... I will say, I will yeah. say, beer helps a football game. Do you know what I mean? I usually have to have a beer if I'm watching football. I haven't done so much in this tournament. What would be at home? But yeah, I didn't even need a beer for this one. I mean, I had a couple. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I thought I had some quite good ones actually. I thought in the first half this was relevant. I mean, I had it on the show last week. This karma comedian from New York. Well, I was a karma comedian in the first half because smashing that goal in the in the first five minutes, nice and calm. Just smash a couple of them down. That was nice. Yeah. And in the second half, I had seven brothers sling it out stout. And we did sling out Ukraine quite comprehensively. So, so that, I was thinking yeah. very pertinent beers. They made me cocoa right. cups, by the way, Rasko. And uh, I'm sure I've told. I'm sure I've gone on about these before. I've definitely um, reviewed them before. Let's put them up there. Mm. This girl, the only problem of coming from Phil. This girl, the only problem I had with the game was I wanted another four goals. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, would have been nice. But yeah, no, to be fair, and to not concede the goal either. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, uh, Gary Lineker was saying, I mean, maybe the second team to not concede in five games in a major tournament in Euros. That that is a huge achievement. Um, in in fairness, um, I think England have had a fair bit of luck on their side um, with the draw. Um, yeah, fair point. If they if they're on the other side of the table. God knows what it would have been like. Um, um, it's a bit more difficult and challenging over there with some teams. But, you know, it, it, this, that's football. That's just the way it happens, you know? Yeah, you never quite um, know what you're going to get. Like, if, this is what I'm saying. I was, I've, been, I've been playing down this tournament, like, I didn't. I was going to do some beer reviews earlier and talk about football, and I thought, no, nah, I'm just going to, like, I'm too worried about concentrating on not worrying about the football to think about writing about beer. And you never know what England t side is going to turn up at any one time, even though we've had like, you know, four games where we've been pretty confident and not conceded and all that. And um, well, it turned out really nice. I mean, it, it's meant to be an after party, but it's sort of like, it's kind of like quite subdued because it was just a really competent performance. And like, yeah. I mean, if, that was, if we was at the pub like that, it'd be going mental, but... Uh, mm. I, picked, I picked a beer. I picked a beer for the after party, which I thought was relevant as well. Uh, well, not that relevant. I got phone party by uh, Green Duck. Yeah, we were talking about Green Duck last week uh, for the um, World Cup of breweries, and we were talking about the beer and the Euros from Cyrus. Uh, I did review that a couple of weeks ago, so I thought, well, that's nice, relevant, and you know, it's really commercial pale ale to celebrate with. And, mm. Lined up afterwards, so uh, I'll drink for you. Uh, uh, please do, please do. Down in one. No, <laughs> well, maybe I could do with this. Actually, that is very smashable. I could. Uh, Phil says he's got the Seven Brothers Honeycomb. Yeah, the Honey Pale Ale, the Honeycomb Pale Ale. Um, nice. That's really sweet, but if you like sweet stuff, it's good. But it's also quite balanced in its sweetness. Mm. Uh, very drink. Uh, I really enjoyed that. I had a couple of those. Seven Brothers again, by the way, they've got a competition on at the moment. One of these, uh, I know we talked, you talked about me entering competitions last, last week. I banged my name in, a, in the ring again to win 12 uh, Seven Brothers uh, beers. Uh, so, Phil, uh, have a look at that over at Seven Brothers. But be very careful, and I will do some warnings. Once again, they had no less than three, I think it was, three separate fake accounts trying to follow people that have entered the competition to try and get, like, scams mm. going on. Mm. Um, it's so obvious. Well, the first one was obvious. It just had Seven Brothers picture logo up and a, and a kind of weird name that didn't make any sense as, as a username. The second one was they, the username was Seven Brothers, but it had, like, too many R's in it and a, something else. And then there was one earlier that had Seven Brothers team. And, mm. you know, and like, the... the you look on the profile, the profile's got like three posts and it's a private account. All well, seven brothers aren't private account. They're very open and, and it only comes from that one. So you just got to be really careful with these things on Instagram, but uh, yeah, just got to watch out if you do it and you think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you're quite big on these competitions instead of me mocking you for it or uh, why don't you say what competitions are out there and just give a public service announcement on it? 
Yeah, so normally what I do is, uh, when I enter them, a lot of them go, like, if you put it on your stories, you get an in extra entry. So they're all kind of there. Obviously, stories don't last for very long. Um, I should start maybe doing that. Uh, maybe next week, like, next time, I'll remember what I've done in a week. Because they normally, they normally last for a week or so. Seven Brothers is the only one I can remember this week. I I've entered about three or four this week. It's been a bit light this week. But I always tag you in. I always tag a load of people in. So if anybody doesn't mind me tagging people in for an entry, and then I'll let you know about stuff. We don't mind if you tag us in. I don't mind if you tag me or even uh, Rasco Disco account. I don't mind if you tag in um, my Disco Does The Gram account. I come onto this one. A lot of people follow me on Disco Does The Gram. But I'm o that's only really an account for A, entering competitions, as it turns out, and B, so I can enter this stream with rasco because rasco comes on on the main uh rasco disco account although rasco's got rasco on gram as well that i always tag you into competitions in so uh if anybody wants to tag us in tag us in on those ones on competitions uh and i'll always usually tag back uh and uh let everybody else know about competitions because i mean a lot of people say oh, you don't win these things but i say i won the other week i won 24 of those brew york beers and a pack of uh Built on from uh, King's Elite Snacks. Uh, it's really nice, to be fair. So I'm going to do a review of that in a week. I'm going to do it this week, but um, it's just a really easy drinking pale ale, American pale ale, some really tasty built on. Uh, comments from Phil. But Phil, what would we do without you, mate? Honestly. Oh, okay. you know, but last again. week, we, could, we couldn't keep up with the comments. Um, because we're having such a great conversation with Rob, who uh, will thank again for coming on the show. Absolutely. Great beer knowledge, man. Um, well, let me know if you man. want to the competitions, if you want to see about them and enter them yourself. Mm. Not that I want any competition in the competitions, because I want to win them all, but you can't, but, you know. Yes. I don't like to tag people, um, really people in that, like, <laughs> I tag us in, like, we I was tagging Kent Beer Reviews because he said, yeah, and like Raggy did a whole video about, oh, yeah, always tag me into competitions. Borman's I always tag into competition because he did a video saying tag me in. So, mm. more you enter, yeah. well, I suppose the more chances you get. Of, I don't know how they do it. They must have to count up all the individual entries. And I don't know. We should do a competition at some stage, but we're not really sort of set up for that kind of thing, are we? We should do like a thousand followers giveaway or something. We missed 500, but. That's not a bad idea. That's, you know, there you go. Well, there you go. Get some more followers, everyone. Like and subscribe, and that way we can have a competition and see how <laughs> badly we can mm, that is one of, screw that up. One of the few times you'll hear me and Rasco say that, like and subscribe, because we don't really, we don't really subscribe to doing business on Instagram, do we? We like, or YouTube for that matter, but everybody knows to like and subscribe. You don't have to tell them. No, you do. No, 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 you do. <laughs> um, it helps. Like and subscribe, everyone. Yeah. Anyway, um, so back on the footy, I, there I was. Um, what going through YouTube, and a game pops up. Um, oh yeah. Oh, oh Shearer is speaking to Southgate. I wonder what he's saying to him. Oh, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> anyway, so yeah. Um, um, actually, I want to hear that. This is. But well, how many times will they mention you in '96? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think um, Southgate's probably say, oh, for fuck's sake, you can just stop mentioning that now. <laughs> you know, I, I think I've done a few things to get over that now. You know, just, uh, yeah, um, I'm leaving born in 96 to know about that game. They must have watched it, though. Yeah, so there you go. Um, so there I was on YouTube when the game comes up. Um, and it was a very interesting game. I remember it, or I thought I remembered it well. But clearly, it was some things I've forgotten. The intensity of the game, I've never, ever forgotten. So, before I say which game it is, I'm going to ask you a question. And Phil, or anyone else who's watching, um, okay. feel free. What is your favourite England game? <coughs> I would probably say, because my memory is not that great, because I, I just... Cause it, all my football mates, right, when I go football, like, oh, do you remember that goal in, nine, in 2000? And I'm like, no, not really. I was there. I'd have to watch it again. I vaguely remember that it happened. But my, the, 
I would probably say just because of the goal that came about, which I think is the greatest goal I've ever seen, albeit on TV, yeah. I think it was the Scotland game in Euro 96 when Gaza did that thing over Colin Hendry's head and smashed it in the back of the net. That is, for me, pound for pound, probably the best England goal I've ever seen, albeit watched on TV. I'd, I'd say that's their best goal. Um... I agree it was the best goal. I wouldn't say it was the best game. England were a bit shoddy in the first half. That's a good point. <laughs> Bill's come up with a great point there. I missed your previous comment, Phil, about the uh, beer competitions. I'll come back to that. But yeah, England beating Germany 4-1 in Germany. Uh, in Munich, yeah. I watched that. We watched that in the we watched that in the Timber Carriage. You remember watching that? Were yes. you there? And it was like the yes, day yes. before. It was 2001, so it was a day. I think it was two days before I went to Australia. Well, I'd packed up, I'd quit everything and fucked off to Australia. And the we, second game, it was like over a weekend. And I, I, I turned up in Sydney on like the Tuesday and had to try and find somewhere <coughs> the following game mm. in Sydney. Yeah, no, that was a very, very good game. Do you know what? I don't remember that. Probably that's the reason I say the Scotland game in 96 is because I don't remember that Munich game so well. I've got it on DVD and I've never watched it back. But there weren't so many really great goals. It was just a really competent performance. And a really exciting yeah. game because we didn't expect it either. It was like, it was just, oh, we were just going to the pub, we were smashed. Oh, hang on, England actually playing really well here. That's a great shout, yeah. actually, Phil. I like that. That is a good shout. What I, would you, I, what's I, your I, answer, Rasko? Well, I re recently re watched the England Germany uh, game uh -huh. in Munich 2001. Um, and England Germany went up first, and then England just went and scored. Heskey yes. even scored. In that, uh, <laughs> I, you know, that. I mean, we like to slag off Heskey, but he was pretty. He yeah. was pretty good. He was a big unit in the box, so he was. A good <laughs> he was pretty inconsistent, though. Um, to be fair, yeah. I did feel sorry for him. Um, uh, hello, um, IPA Quebec. Oh, are you from Canada? How's the weather doing? Mm. Seriously, really um, good. To see you. Thanks for popping in. Um, Let's know what you're no, doing. The best. The, you the game I found on YouTube. And I rewatched it. Well, eleven minute highlights, and it was to do with the gold, the so called golden era. And they were looking so fucking sharp. It was a friendly against Argentina in two thousand five, and England won the game three two. Okay, and went down, went down, and managed to get bring it back within the last ten minutes. And what I love about it is that England never stopped. They kept going. There was a positivity and a ruthlessness. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, this side doesn't have this ruthlessness. It's got the clinicalness. It's mm -hmm. great, but it's not as ruthless. Jim, mm. we've got our sports correspondents Jim now McCann. joining us. Now, yes. now we're going to get some intelligent input. Or not. <laughs> well, let's see how yes. much... Uh... How much beer is... Greetings, James. How you doing, sir? Cheers. Hello, hello. hello. Hello, Hello, North Wales. If I, you, if I put you this way, can you still see me? Or is that a terrible thing? We can, but it we looks can. awful because for some reason it just doesn't work landscape to portray in this this situation. So. The, the only problem is that my, my battery is running out, or has, uh, so I've I, I got you under charge. And of course my battery plug plugs in at the bottom, which means mm. I can't have you straight... There, Brown. So, well, little tip: do what I do. You wouldn't believe this, mate. I'm, you know, I'm tight as anything, right? I'm not buying no bed roll. I have a toilet roll, you know. Yeah, yeah. The traditional. I've, 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 I've come across this. Yeah, I've cut. And there's a thing on the internet. You just cut it into like the section so that it sits, and you can plug it up underneath. I hear. You. I hear. You. But um, I haven't done that now, and I'm probably not going to do it right now. So I've got you well, balanced. So if I'm a little, little bit wonky, that's the reason. That's, that's, I think that's my little tip for you. Uh, streaming Pro. Sorry, James, say it again. So let's just call it RT. Yes, totally. Ipquest right. file, file style angles. It looks all right, mate. Yeah, it's, it's, it's you and your... Uh, Informative sports correspondency that we're looking for tonight, okay. and, and beer talk. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put much truck in that, to be honest. But uh, <laughs> yes, 
Phil Smith. Uh, I, did, I did watch the game. I can. I can show. <laughs> I have my. I have my shirt on. <laughs> underneath. Hidden. Underneath. Underneath. <laughs> For, for, for any viewers who may be unaware, I, I live in North Wales, where, um, well, in in the bar where I was watching, the brewery just around the corner. Well, uh, one second. Uh, what, what, what's Jim, um, journalist Jim, would you mind introducing yourself to our viewers? Because they are asking who the hell Yeah, are sorry, you? Phil, Phil Smith, a, a regular a stickler for details and facts and, and secretary uh, viewer. Ask who is the guy with the fabulous beard on the bottom right, and he does. He, you do have a probably even more fabulous beard than me, I would say. But yeah, this is this is a man. This is a man, Jim. No, Jim, who are you, and why Dave, are you here? Dave, my mum's got a more fabulous beard than you. Anyway, um, oh, <laughs> who's Dave? <that? laughs> my, my name's for anyone 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 who doesn't know me already. My name's James. Hello. Um, long, long time, long time, uh, drinking buddy of, of this couple now living up in North Wales. Hello. Um, yeah, that's, that's, writer, that, that, journalist, that's, that's, editor, PR consultant, DJ, hippie, uh, <laughs> vanquisher of dragons, slayer of demons, and, uh, all, all round good, good chap. Maiden enlightened. You know, say the word. I'll do it. Super. I will take. I will take. Uh, I will take stock of the uh, going to a Welsh brewery in England. Do you not remember that game where we watched England versus Wales in in, in the rugby in the Bellevue? And I we do, wore I do, in shirts, and they were fine about that. Well, I don't see how it would not be fine to drink in a Welsh brewery with an England top on. Be right. Well, rug rugby and football are different games. I uh, do have different True. different fans, <laughs> so I was I was keeping my cards close to my chest. So when we were so in the it, at, at, in the bar, there was no shortage of lads in red tops. Um, <laughs> in, in yeah, it well was rugby tops, singing, uh, cheering on Ukraine. Um, and singing like the Welsh National Anthem. However, the same but, lads, it turned out later, were also wearing Scottish kilts in order to complete this sort of Celtic <laughs> fringe. <laughs> um, but surely you, do they know you now? They, you, you know everybody in the village now, surely, isn't that how it works? Then? Yeah, both of them. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, um, that, that said... That said, they did all cheer the uh, England goals. Um, I'm refusing yeah, it's to, all, it's I'm all good. to comment. Uh, sorry, James, uh, I'm doing comments at the same time. I'm refusing to read that comment out, Phil. Uh, I don't mind about you being the slayer of beer, but I'm not even that destroyer of whatever that... Uh, it doesn't matter. Anybody can drink what they want, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Destroyer of, of beer. We shall mention. It, throwing it in the skip. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, all is well. So I was at. If you, if I'm just gonna, if if you're gonna go, if I'm just gonna riff on me from well, I was at the Conway. I was at the Conway Brewery, <laughs> and uh, news news from the Conway Brewery is um, actually I should probably look it up. To find out who they are, who they sold to, the yeah, uh, Conway Brewery has sold to um, the same people who brew the West Sussex three hundred and sixty beers. So I'll go. Uh, sorry, Conway yeah. brew West Sussex beers. West Sussex three hundred and sixty. Yeah. Um. Okay, so they've had a they had a, a job lot of new investment in their brewery. Okay. Um, the most significant of which, at the moment, is that uh, they rebranded their glasses. Yeah. Not that I've not that I've just nicked a glass or anything from my lab. 
just there. Well, you can always, it's not exactly far to go. You can pop it up there back in the morning if they're worried about it. Yeah. So they've got uh, this, this shape of glass is, has always been my favorite. Not a straight yeah. pint, not a little bulgy pint. Robert Rankin described it. Robert Rankin, the author, the Brentford author, described it as rising to fill the hand with an engagingly feminine bulge. Okay, what's the technical oh. term? I don't know. It's one of these, <laughs> isn't it? I'm sure. I'm sure one of our one of our viewers could could uh, could tell us exactly what this shape of beer glass is called. But it's my favorite. Okay. It's my favorite. Rising. Oh, yeah, wild, wild, uh, wild horses have just dropped in. They might be able to tell you, being uh, the other of your local breweries. Yep. Is that? Is it, I, I, I do. Rising to fill the hand. I, but... Rising to fill the hand with an engagingly feminine bulge. Anyway, so this uh -huh. is the new branding from Conway Beer. Hmm. Super. The glass. They did give it to me. They did say I could have it. <laughs> just, a, just a small uh, fair play. Just a small point of order. Fair, fair play. He says he is the destroyer of Carling, i.e., smashing it down the sink. Good call, sir. <laughs> That's reasonable. Best thing to do with Carling. Best thing to do with Carling. Yeah. 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 So um, don't, don't pay for it first, though. Hmm. Uh, so what beers did you have tonight, James, down at Conway? So I started off with the, uh, on the keg, uh, the surfing IPA, the surfing, yeah, I think that's what it's called. Yeah. I should probably, I should probably just check that. Um, Yo, Brandon. Sorry, Ellen. I was just saying, you're Brandon. So um, it, I, I, I thought we have to sort of go, we go into the comments. So I just see Brandon appear at the comments and he just goes, yo. So I just go, hey, yo, Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, yeah, Surfing IPA, which is a 4.8% Californian style uh, jobby on keg. Now, Conway is, is quite a traditional brewer. And and the, the the main specialty is in cask and and in yeah, you're not going to get your weird and wonderful you know grapefruit and black currant sours or anything. But uh, um, certain IPA, it's good. It's good, crafty, hoppy, um, West Coast grapefruit. IPA. Plenty of grapefruit, then I would say. Uh, it's citrusy, certainly. <laughs> uh, um, we, we can have a whole to that what is citrus and what is grapefruit but <laughs> oh yeah it wasn't it wasn't it's not it's not a real sharp ooh, ooh. It's mm -hmm. just, it's just, but there's a gentle citric nature yeah i moved on to the beach coma on cask which is very pleasant let's, let's say it's an easygoing pail with nothing to um i i said nothing it's, it's it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fairly standard session pale ale, you know. It's 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 it's. I'm not going to say anything against it. It's just it's a really it's a good beer. It's good beer. Yes, yeah. drink plenty of. It's not overwhelming with. I was like, oh yeah, this is full of ginger. This is full of this. It's just it's just a nice session beer. Moved on to um, what did I move on to? The San Francisco quad hopped. Uh, American IPA, which was a bit special. I've got to say that is a lot maltier. Mm. Uh, um, at five point five percent, as a nice, nice, uh, hefty thing. Not over, not not too strong. It's all good. Uh, and then I moved on to a San Francisco on the cake. So it had because they had the uh, had it on both cask and cake. So I thought I'd I'd try them both out. You know for for the sake of science, and uh, <laughs> not your liver. And there wasn't a huge difference. <laughs> Gotta <can't laughs> say, keg, keg, slight, slightly, slightly colder, slightly fizzier. The same multi tones, all everything fine there. Super. So what, what are you guys doing? Really says, yeah, Rasper, you got to get Yeah. Yes, yes, I am going to brew 
London. Uh, I will be there on the Friday, Phil, the Friday afternoon. And no longer than that. Um, I might stay longer if I can. Um, I'll see what I can do. Now, I'm drinking this. <laughs> Fair play. Um, mixed in with this and some lemon. Phil, are you going? Let us know. Is anyone else who's watching Going to Brew London? Look us up, mm -hmm. find out. Um, I'm also going to be at the London Craft Beer Festival all weekend. Um, so, yeah, look us up and try and find us. I uh, might even do a bit of filming that day. Yeah, um, I'll do some rise hey, Yeah. Kent Beer Reviews, how the I devil are you? Literally. Fun. Yeah, literally, how the devil are you, mate? Um, fresh, fresh off the beer mile this afternoon. Seen them lives this afternoon, Craig. Uh, look good. Yeah. When, uh, live from Colonel and live from Anspech and Hobby. Some good beers mate, up. Ken, I had to turn turn it off, mate. I was just jealous because there I was just sipping my tea, which I'm still doing. Um, I hope you had a, enjoyed it. What's your highlights from the from your little trip down the mile today? Did you see any event taking place this evening? Um, and what's your favourite England game? Anyone who's watching right now, let us know in the comments what was your favourite England game you've ever watched. Mine, Argentina, England, friendly, um, 2005. Um, brilliant game. Michael Owen scored. Drew he scored. Owen yeah. scored twice. That's a, that's a question really for you, James. You must have watched a few. Uh, Rasko said that one. I said I went with the only one I could remember. I went with uh, England Scotland in '96 with the Rooney goal over Colin Hendry's head. Phil Gas Smith scoring went, goal. Gas set scoring against Germany in Munich. Two fouls for one. What would you say, I, Rasko? I, uh, James. I also went. I also my my first. My first thought when you say that, my first thought also goes back here in '96. It goes back to um, England, Spain. England, Spain, four-two. In penalties. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. yeah, there yeah. Was, it's quite a few games to pick from in that one because, like, beating Holland as well, aren't they? So. Yeah, and Euro '96 was was the classic And you're seeing, I see a lot of this on interviews with footballers uh, uh, you're watching Crouchy's year late Euros right yeah because no. it's great uh, um, <laughs> I'll catch up with that afterwards I think you well, should watch just for the co-presenter mate it's good fun and she is co-presenter lady is is, is, is very good looking um, she's and terrible about about everything else but she's very good looking um, uh -huh. Alex, you should watch for Alex Horn and the Horn section, which is amazing. Anyway. Awesome. Oh, superb, yeah, he's good. He's good. I like him. And his band is too. Um, Did you know Rasko's never seen Taskmaster? Yeah, what should. is it? It's 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 a lot of fun, dude. If I'm if I'm going to watch if I'm going to go back and watch Peter Crouch's after football show, you've got to go back and watch Taskmaster and James. Lucy told you to be, to do that, remember? And I'm telling you that as well. Mate, Taskmaster is like the funniest hour on TV. I don't even watch TV. I don't even own a TV, but I will go and watch Taskmaster clips after the yeah. event on It's brilliant. Genius. Yeah. Yeah, Rasko, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can account for that. It's, it's, it's a really stupid, stupid TV show. Which is so funny. So if you don't know who it's Alex good. Horn is, catch up with Taskmaster, you'll find that. He's brilliant. Just a quick comment there. Right. Twining very good. made from his owl. So who what? Uh, Twinings. Phil is 20 minutes from twi Twinings tea. I don't know. I don't actually know where they're made, but I know Twinings. Uh, Phil Southwest, isn't he? So. And another comment from Kent Beer Review. Had a wonderful time this afternoon. A Colonel Taproom and their Export India Porter. Oh, that is a good one. My favourite England game was England versus the Netherlands Euro 96. That was a good game. That was when England got to the stride. Yeah, a lot of games to choose from there, really, wouldn't you say? We didn't, we've had three already, so yeah, absolutely. I think, I think, well, I think, to be honest, I think it's... Well, it's, it's also our age, right? To a certain extent, because, yeah. yeah. Because everyone, everyone, in the same way that everyone likes music 
from when they were 17. Right. It, it's it's the, the most significant football tournament from around your mid-teens. I think that really makes an impact on you. All right, so my first, the first football tournament that I watched that so I, I sort of had some inkling about was Italian Ivy. I, I knew what was going on. Yeah. But World Cup, you know, USA 94 didn't really sort of make a big impact on me. No. Euro 96, there we go. So I think there's a lot of people our age for whom Euro 96 was a, was a big deal because it was a big deal. It was for coming home. It was, it was, no, it, we were hosting. It, 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 a positive effect as well. The positivity of that. Because I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm a few, I'm a couple of years older than you guys, so I remember that game in '86 against Argentina. Yeah, you're way more um, mature than we are. A couple of years, yeah, a couple of years on you. <laughs> no, I would say I'm definitely more. Well, I'm definitely not more mature. You, you, you family guys, and I'm not more mature than you guys. <laughs> <laughs> the the, the uh, reason I, I would argue, Dan, I was saying down the southwest, so Andover. Sorry, Rashford. Now, the reason I'd say the England-Argentina um, game 2005, like I said, there was ruthlessness, but it was a friendly. It was literally, it was a friendly between England and Argentina, and they were both playing like it was the World Cup final. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was end-to-end, -end, absolute adrenaline. Both teams were very good and on their ball. Um, mm. But England managed to cling it back in the last 10 minutes, and what a win. And yeah. just shame it wasn't for an actual cup. Um, <laughs> Hi, Sarah, Ken, by the way. Sarah's just put in. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> Kent Beer says, yes, Italian 90 was the first real tournament if I remember and felt um, Gaza tears. Yes, that yeah. I do remember in the school playground. Mm. <laughs> Bringing it back yeah. to the link between football and beer, though, was during um, USA 94. Yeah, it was 94, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, um, right. Who remembers of you two in South Harrow of Flaherty's bar? Um, <laughs> you were a yeah. 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 So my brother and I ended up painting um, doing some face paints because we had the whole uh, uh, counting family background. We ended up doing face paints with, with people doing uh, uh, Irish flags on their faces outside of, outside the bar. Yeah. And someone gave us a fiver when we did it. Bang, it's like a fiver in the pocket. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, it, we did, did another, I was about 13, 12, 12 or 13, maybe 14. I did another one and someone was like another five in a pocket and we made a fucking fortune from <laughs> Ireland going through the uh, <laughs> through, through uh, it was great he was, um, he was also got that little entrepreneurial business scene going on <laughs> yes yeah, so you were 96 we went up on Wembley Way and, and we're doing it then <laughs> and <laughs> we, were doing, we were doing it we were doing it for free obviously but people just tip five, five, five pound notes in their pockets and yeah. cut the quid. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Great, mate. Yeah. Doing it for free, Mr. Taxman. Uh, Ken, beer review yeah, says I'm. Ever happened. This is clearly anecdotal uh, uh, fantasy, if anyone yeah. from me, Inland Revenue, is watching. It's a total lie. Yeah. Yeah. Ken, beer review says I remember Ray Hooten against Italy. I do remember that, but not very well and not enough to. to Go through it, I think, to be fair. But yeah, I, well, I remember, I remember big Jackie Charlton in charge of Italy, shouting on the touchlines. That was some John Aldridge. Mm. So, mm. oh, what's that you got there, uh, Dave? So I'm a couple of months behind on my beer fifty two boxes. Other right, wine societies are available. One. So the Belgian. This is one of the Belgians. Is that the Kavik IPA? 
It certainly is. Superb. That was all right, actually. I quite like that one. I'm, I, I like Kavik IPAs. The, I, I was a bit surprised. Uh, oh, I'll get oh, some of that. Uh, um, <laughs> I was a bit surprised in that a lot of these beers from, from this box appear to be from the same brewery. Nothing is yeah, there was four or five, weren't there? I don't, I don't know what the brewery... I didn't, I didn't do any reviews of them. I just drunk them because I didn't... I, when I signed up for that box, I, I was hoping it was the Yorkshire box. And so well, I was quite surprised how good they were. I, I you know, I, I, I'm not a part of any other beer delivery scheme no but all of the beers are, are, are from beer 52 are top notch no, yeah yeah i had one i had one on the show last week that was a a, a junior knee for new england ipa with citra and you know i don't like citra but even i enjoyed yeah. that one it was from salt it was a big 440 can in the last month's box the yorkshire box and uh, even I enjoyed that one. So yeah, you're not wrong. They do they do come with some pretty decent beers. To be fair, a little bit too much on the three thirties for my liking. I'm 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 a, I'm a four forty man these days. Thomas, it's good to see you. Thanks for popping in. How you doing, T Thomas? Dare I ask, what's your favourite England game? Well, <laughs> what's your favourite football game? <laughs> Thomas is um, off Ireland. I'm not sure he's that fast on football, to be fair. Very sensible, fair if so. Uh, but yeah, if you have any memories of England games, which one's your favourite or which ones do you remember? Yeah. Uh, should I we think, do it? You know, Dave, when I said England, Spain, you know yeah. where I was? When it was there. Who's Dave? Yeah. Sorry. Disco. Who's Dave? <laughs> Hello, Disco. <laughs> Someone totally uh, other than that. Disco. Do you remember where I was when when uh, Do you know where I was when I when the England Spain game was on in Euro '96? Um, I mean, it, it could have been anywhere. Um, I don't somewhere know. Close, where were you? Somewhere close to the hearts of the three of us. In fact, I was at Chaffin Heights. Oh, Chaffin Heights. Oh, the old scout yeah. camp. Oh, Chaffin me. Heights scout camp. And we were actually listening to it on the radio. We weren't even watching it. Mm. I don't remember the Spain game at all, to be fair. Anyway, well, I do. I, I do, but not like in any detail. Again, like I say, like I only remember certain details because my aged old brain. Mm. I'll tell you what so, I've got. Yeah, go on, Rasco. Um, I was just saying, what does everyone else in the comments think of Beer 52? Let us know, because a lot of people love it, a lot of people don't. I've, Peter Crouch is on TV now with his fabulous co-host, um, okay. and it, I'm, I'm a bit distracted by the programme all I of a sudden. I heard there's no copyright so, right there for showing the, the BBC live on Instagram IGTV, but you should know. Be because they'd never work it out until you mention it out loud. But hey, um, we'll see what happens on YouTube when we, when they do the YouTube checks. It's under thirty seconds, so um, yeah. we'll be all right. I tell you, what, whilst we got you here, James, just quickly, like a thing we like to do every week on the show for the last few weeks, we've been doing the the Euro beer names uh, that are run by Siren over on Twitter. Okay, go so on. We, we like to run through the current games, and this is basically just based on. On beer names, the one before the, the, the World Cup of Beers was based on the breweries and, you know, the randomness of Twitter polls. This is just based on the beer names, but randomness of Twitter polls and the arbitrary nature. But let's just run through. the They're up to the quarterfinals, obviously. Uh, what would you say was the best beer names out of this lot? And what do you think will go through? Uh, the first three have already been done. Uh, game one was uh, Electric Bear... With a beer called Duck U Autocorrect up against Brew York's Rhubarb Streisand. I would have gone for so Brew so York there. Rhubarb well, Streisand, very nice. Yep. Yeah. That's a great shout, Rasco. Rhubarb Streisand. I think we said that last week, didn't we? Yeah, but I, I quite like D Duck U. What? Duck U a very good beer name, to be fair. Yeah. Well, 54.3% Rhubarb Streisand went through on that one. 
to the, to the semi-finals during also the week. Also, very fine beer. Also, a very fine beer. I do like the look of Ducky Auto Correct. I believe that's another Kavik beer. So, I think that's Kavik Pale Ale. So, I do like Kavik. So, I might have a look at that. Uh, the next one was uh, a brewery almost close to my heart, close to us anyway, with, with Weird Beard, uh, with a beer called Sweet Child of Pine. So good, like that. Reference. And they were up against Torside, uh, which is a brewery I don't know too much, but I've been checking them out. And their beer, in, in, in their entry was called, And You Will Know the Beer is Craft by the Length of Its Name. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate I appreciate that. So what was it going up against? What was the first one? Name? Uh, Weird Beard and yeah. Sweet Child of Pine. Hmm. Sweet Child oh, of Pine oh. up against and you all know the length of the Yes. I'm gonna go the second yeah. one. Yeah, same second one. Second yeah, one. well I I went with Weird Beard because I do like the Guns N' Roses reference, but yeah, with sixty percent Tour sides, and you'll know the beer by its craft by the length of its name. Won that one and went through. Um, the next one was uh, Fallen Acorn, which is I think I've got one in a bit. No, I haven't. No, uh, which is a, bit, a brewery I know, but um, their beer was called Have You Got Any Samples? <laughs> and against Elusive, which are Siren's neighbours up in Finch Hampstead, and their oh, yeah. current beer called Crisp Witty. Oh, very good. Very good. And just 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 to be so bang on the marketing and on the trend, elusive, brilliant. When that video broke this week, you know, with Chris Whitty being like yeah. a, a half assaulted in the park, <laughs> the very next day they put a photograph up, they sent Chris Whitty a twelve pack of Crisp Whitty, which I think is a Belgian wit, I believe. It's one of nice. their birthday yeah. boys. Yeah five or six years old this year. Uh, and I think, yeah, I, don't if, my vote. I don't know if that helped with about, uh, I think it was about 80% that went through. <laughs> well, have you got an example, which is a good name, beer name, but Chris Witty, I believe, uh, and I said this the other week, is my tip for the final, along with Rhubarbra Streisand. I think they're both very, very strong. Short, concise, and very, very good humour. Very funny. I'm, I'm going to call fun. it. I, f I think um, you know the name by Kraft will win it. Um, be honest, that that's the one that's going to win it. Well, yeah, all I'm very strong. It. All very strong in this round. The last round, which uh, actually starts tomorrow. Oh, that's right. Sorry. So, Chris Whitty and Have You Got Any Samples is still in running. It finishes ten o'clock tomorrow. Chris Whitty is in the lead by 80% when I checked it a couple of hours ago before the game. The next one that starts tomorrow is McColl's uh, Let's Eat Pies and Talk About Men's Mental Health, which, as I said before, I did do on the show a few weeks ago uh, before uh, they actually started this tournament. Um, so McColl's are up in County Durham. Uh, Men's Pie Club is a... Uh, charity up there that uh, deals with men's mental health and that's a black black and white pepper bitter it's only 3.6 percent it's very easy drinking with an odd kind of peppery flavor to it which is very nice actually to be fair um so i've got that one i've got another one who's a cup of might do that tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon against so that's mccall's let's eat pies and talk about men's mental health and they are up against wild weather which is brewed from from reading that we have actually had at Ealing beer festival uh, and I actually got the one in this week uh, up against Cake Batter Batter Swing. Uh, I got it in this week, and Cake Batter Batter Swing is, are you ready for this, James? A well, dark cherry and vanilla black lager. Which makes no sense in every sense in the world at the same time. <laughs> dark cherry and what? Dark cherry and vanilla batter sweet. Dark cherry and vanilla black lager. Why not? And that's phenomenal. Interesting. It kind of pours like a stout, <laughs> but it's a dark lager. It's uh, quite, I mean, phenomenal can. Great artwork, I've, very tiny. 
I, I'm quite a big fan of dark lager. Um, wherever yeah. I can get it, I, I will. I get it. I will literally chop down forests and trees and small villages to get it. Well, check this one out from Wild Weather, mate. Great cherry smell on the nose. Really? Mm. I can't recall any specific um, flavoured ones like cherry or sweeteners in it. No, Rasta, oh. you introduced me to one at, um, at Ealing Beer Festival, actually. Remember that? Yes! A yes! Smoked, a smoked dark lager. Yes, yes, yes. A little yes. pumpy pump. Be. Yeah, that was a Dutch beer, wasn't it? No idea. I think so. No, you, 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 no, you introduced, or well, one, someone introduced us to that, and we couldn't get enough of it. We were, it finished just shy of my beer of the year. Actually, well, I, just, I remember it being, I remember it being, being a, a, a challenging beer, right? In, a, yeah. in that it challenged our uh, yeah. preconceptions. Yes. Because there was, there was, yeah, because it was an IPA, but it was also a lager, essentially, and it was yeah, dark. That's right, it was. Oh my god! Thank you for reminding me of that I couldn't pronounce the name of it. Yeah, it's, it's in old, Dutch. Um, question for Disco: Are you going to brew London later this month? Uh, Craig, I'm not. No. Um, I know. I know. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. I know we've had this discussion before, sort of. But no, yeah, no. July is again still too early for me for doing stuff. <coughs> Due to personal situation, and and uh, I apologise for that, and hopefully that will be the end of the matter, <laughs> which I believe is the current way of dealing with stuff at the moment. If you don't do something, or you do something wrong, and then you apologise, and that's the end of the matter, I believe, is the current trend. Um, this don't, part, don't, don't, don't say that, mate, because I might sack you tomorrow. Okay, well... <laughs> 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 Uh, I'm confused. I can't do words at the moment. This is fucking insane. Absolutely mental. It's a dark lager that smells of cherry, wild cherry, dark cherry. It's amazing. It tastes like a pastry, pastry stout. Mm. It's got some uh, amazing, it's obviously it's got chocolate, chocolatey or dark malts in it. It tastes like a chocolate gatto. Or maybe I'm just thinking chocolate gatto because it says black cherry. I don't know. It says dark cherry and vanilla. I never, I never taste vanilla in beers. Vanilla is weird flavour for me, but that is quite frankly phenomenal. It tastes like a pastry stout. Six point two percent. It's got a little bit of like that kind of barrel aged alcoholic edge, like a, a black forest pastry stout has. It's quite frankly phenomenal. Beer of the year. Do you know what, Rasco? Now you mentioned there's a little bit of there's a touch of um. It's a touch of light on the back end, a touch of wateriness. Maybe that's the lager thing, but it's a phenomenal, phenomenal black cherry and chocolate taste rather than vanilla. Yeah. Um, and I liked Let's Eat Pies and Talk About Men's Mental Health. It was a very light, peppery bitter. That blows it out of the water for me because it's much more my kind of thing. But um, name-wise, Cake Batter Batter Swing is a great name. I don't know. But this is a phenomenal beer. Absolutely brilliant. I've got three other of their beers from Wild Weather. They're only up in Reading. That's, remember I said to you, we've got to go up Reading and check these guys out. Um, a John Peel Banana Milkshake IPA. I've got a Coffee Stout and a beer called Dude Where's My Donut, hmm. which is a jam, donut, and custard white stout. Um... So we need to check these guys out. Let's go. This is an amazing beer. Fair enough. Cray, uh, Kent Beer Review. I will be at Brew London, though, on Friday, the Friday afternoon session, if you want to meet up, if I believe you're there at the same time. I hope you are. It'd be good to see you. If I recover in time. <laughs> um, yeah, um, back to what you're saying. Yes, I, I think that's on the list of things to do. A trip to Reading. Um <laughs> It's changed a lot, Reading. There's about three tap rooms in Reading. I think Elusive have got a tap room in Reading Wild, wherever I've got one. There's another one as well. There's, there's one right outside the um, sta station now these days. Uh, there you go. Um, Phantom are based in Reading, and they did a collaboration with Mad Yank. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that'll come out soon. They did that recently. Mm. Yeah, Phantom, we've got to try. Uh, there's another one in Reading as well uh, that's not got a tap room, but it's a really small brewery that only, they only do sours. Well, and sending them off to North Wales then. Hey. Uh, not si- well, not, siren. It's not siren. It's siren uh, a way out of Reading. Siren and Elusive are a fair way out of Reading and harder to get to. Um, but yeah, they are kind of Reading ish. Um, do you know Johnny Garrett cycled from his house, his former house, um, all the way to Siren's tap room? That's quite a way, my friend. Yeah. The good, I mean, all right, Reading is not that far for us. I mean, for me, it's a bus and a train journey. We mm. do it within like almost an hour and a bit. But cycling, that's some journey. I've got an yeah. idea for you, and I will talk about this offline. I've got a cycling idea for you. Don't humiliate yourself, mate. Uh, double no, barrel brewery, lads. Double barrel double brewery. One I pray, that's the other one I was thinking of. They're out that way as well. Loddon, Loddon are not quite in Reading. They're actually in Oxfordshire, but it's just just over the border. They're kind of almost yeah, Reading. Parts, I think. Mm. Mm. Fair, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> right. Talk so, amongst yourselves. I'm just going to enjoy this kind of dark fair terror. Enough. So insanity. Covered. Insanity. Well, is it challenging your conceptions of beer? Um, yes, because it's not a lager. Well, it is a lager. It doesn't taste like a lager. It's insane. Okay. You, but it's, you, it's absolutely beautiful. You, you regularly say to me, I don't know what the categories are for beer of the year. Mate, I've always said whatever challenges your conception. For no, me, for what you've described, that what, is a beer of the year nomination. What it is, though, it is very similar uh, to the beer of the year nomination I said in January, well, this one, Ooh. which is a Black Forest pastry stout from Mad Dog in Wales, in South Wales. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow. And I said in January, that was my shout for beer of the year already. And this, mm. as a dark lager, is very similar in mouthfeel, consistency and taste to that. That's insane. And it's funny, they're next to each other on the, on the bar there. Um, luckily, I've got another. I've got another can of this, so I'm going to enjoy this during the week and check it out. Um, that's insane. And uh, Beardy Beer Reviews, who was talking to us last week, uh, whose local brewery is the Wild River, uh, he's got some of these as well. So I'm going to chat to him about this because this is fantastic. Great. Um, we might have a guest on the show next week, everyone. When the- talk about it we will let you know if we don't do have a guest do you want to do the beer of the year nominations as of yet well we are a little overdue for that i was just about to say that's a very good point rasco yeah we normally do it halfway through uh i've got i think i've got enough to uh fill a list i know you definitely have mm-hmm. uh james have you got any beer of the year nominations yourself beers you've had off the top of your head can you think of ones that you you've had good beers this year Putting you on the spot. Oh, I know, but so yeah, um, <laughs> putting you on the spot anyway, but, you know, just off the top of your head, like. Yeah, no. Uh, last week I had a, uh, last week, yesterday, I had a, a, a pressure drop. No, I can't remember the name of it. A pressure drop mango sour, which oh, was yeah. remarkably similar to my beer of the year nomination last year, which was a pressure drop mango coconut. Uh, Imperial Sour. Last year, they, think, last year they blew it in at ten percent. This year was uh, six point six point eight percent. It was a slightly different flavour combination, but it was really exceptional, exceptional beer. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll have a good think for next year, next week. I'll have a good good think. Yeah, welcome to to, to pitch some into the mix. If you've got some. Uh... Because I know Rasco, I'm sure, I'm guessing Rasco's got a pressure drop on his list too. <laughs> I, do. I do have a pressure drop on the list, but all shall not be revealed just yet. Because yeah. I'm going to say the list is not as big or substantial as 
last year, it's this time last year, but it is pretty... You did, rock up, you did rock up middle of the year last year with, what, 13 different options in June for beer of the year. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I did four because I'd whittled it down already, but... <laughs> mm. um, Bobby, I'll be lucky if I get to... Craig, anybody else, if you've got beer of the year nominations, think what, you, what you'd put on your list, let us know. We'll have a... We'll have a look at anything, uh, but we, we, we do it on basically ones we've had, ones we've enjoyed. I like to do it on ones I've had more than one off. I know we only sort of do like one offs a little bit because of beer reviewing. We just do ones. I, I tend to get beers in pairs, but you know, like sometimes you can only have one because you're ordering a lot of beers or whatever. I, th I think that's a very wise and sensible idea because you know, um, when Craig was on the show, in fact, I nominated a beer of the year um and you know what um you guys went well you just had a sip and you've had a bit so i went back and i've had it again um and i watched craig's review of when he had it he did a youtube review please check it out it is a uh palmer island oh mr something i have to have it written down i better write all these things down because i don't have them well written as i did previously but it was, it was <laughs> It, it is fabulous. It was just perfect, like everything Pomona Island seemed to do. And uh, you can guess who's on my brewery of the year list so far. Well, um, that's another thing we do, yeah, do the brewery of the year list. Um, and again, because we keep looking at breweries, we'll have a different list this year. Sorry, James, what was that? The partisan would be up there for my brewery of the, brewery of the year. Okay, we was, was chatting everything, to we was, everything they do is just so good. We was chatting about Partisan last week with uh, Rob from Hop Scene. I haven't seen Partisan that much um, in the last year or so, but obviously he knows them pretty well. Uh, you know them pretty well, James, obviously. Um, we'll have to go and find them out a little bit. It's a name I know, but I haven't seen them for a couple of years. I've, I've been to their tap room uh, yeah. on the mile. Oh. It's. I wouldn't even say it's on the mile. It's actually a awesome. mile away from the mile. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different mile. Yeah. Um, um, is there any chaps? Yeah. I, I, I hope I've got my dates right with this. I might be totally wrong. When the first lockdown hit and breweries were looking to do... Um, things to keep the revenue going yeah and you want to support your local brewery when i was living in walthamstow signature was a fairly local brewery yeah signature, great beers as you know all brewed in conjunction with bands or with a musical theme absolutely um, they were advertising uh, a big it's, it's, Essentially, a piss up in a brewery. Mm. Right. They'd have a, they'd have a big party. Yeah. They'd have a big party, and when everything was over, they'd have a big party. They'd have bands and everything did else. It, did that not turn out that they couldn't actually organise a piss up in a brewery because of like COVID and shit? Well, I'm not certain, but I'm relatively certain that it's due for next Saturday. Oh really? I haven't seen because I, I signed up for it, but I haven't seen the things for it. So, did you buy next ticket? Saturday? Did you actually shut out the cash and buy tickets? I don't think I, I did. I think I just signed up for like, the, the 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 emails. But I don't think I actually got a ticket for it. Because I did. Because I didn't think I was going to move four hundred miles across country. <laughs> so why actually have two tickets to? Uh, 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 two tickets to Signature Signature Breweries Piss Up in a Brewery I've, I've, I temporarily forgot I know a brewery yeah. uh, two tickets to Signature Breweries Piss Up in a Brewery next and I think it's next Saturday ok so well, if any of your well, if any of your um, listeners viewers watchers Oh, interesting. There, there you go. It could be our first competition there, Disco. 
Well, yeah, absolutely. Well, because if, if uh, not, obviously, if not, I'll give it to one of our neighbours. <laughs> but but if anyone's interested, let me know through the Rasco Disco channels. Yeah. Super, because like your baby and Rasco would have been all over that for you. We would have happily gone in your place. Um, but A, next Saturday, and B, I've already stated I'm not really doing anything in July yet. Um, but yeah, if anybody else... The word uh, let us know. Or should we do it as a comp... Well, I, well, I can't really do it as a competition. It's too soon, and you can't organise it in that time. Of course you no. Great shout off. If, if, we can get, if we can get rid of those tickets for you, James, we will, of course, if we can. Well, if not, I've got coffee. I can. I've got my first crisps. <laughs> um. Have you not done media training where it says don't eat on camera, James? Come on. <laughs> if not, I've got some neighbours I can give it to. Uh, so you know, don't, don't worry about it too much. But if anyone has made it this far through our live cast. Yeah, let us know in the comments. Absolutely. Well, uh, there's still three people watching, so thanks to whoever everybody is. And also, when we put this up on YouTube through the week, thanks for watching. There's three of us. No, I don't think it works like that. There is, there is two other people. Three other people, is it? Yeah, and then other people. Also, if, if, still, if you're still watching, raise your hands in the air. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, and um, right. So, um, there we go, fellas. We've been on for 50 minutes. Um, I'm watching Peter Crouch and l loving the show in silence. Uh, We've got a potential first ever competition. I think we could organise it in a short time. Well, let me have a think. Probably not because I'm incredibly busy. And and I, I've told you my movements, what I'm going to be up to. We may have a guest next week. We are not sure. We will have to get in touch with them. Big surprise. Well, a little bit of a surprise. Well, we'll 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 we've got emails are being sent out. They have been sent out. And uh, yeah, it's no, Sarah, absolutely, you do count. I think if you are the other one, then that's a very important one. Yes. Um, and, and if and if and if you're coming back with with the with the count, uh, you are the most important one because previously your your uh, top fan sticker got stolen by Phil Smith, who does appear to have disappeared. Maybe he's too Smith, too pissed, too Smith. He's gone to smash and Carly down the sink. I don't know, but um, looks like tonight, sir, you're our number one fan. Thanks for popping in. Um, Congratulations. Superb. How's the tequila rosé going? Um, I was going to say um, maybe we should do fan of the year award. Fan of the year, fan of the year would be a very tightly contested. Uh, James has just leaned forward and put a, put a comment in the thing himself. At least you can count. <laughs> Thanks, James. Eh? <laughs> Fan of the year would be a very hotly contested, uh, hotly contested title. I believe we've we've had a lot of people looking in, and thank you to each and every one of you for doing that. By the way, we always say that. Thanks for popping in, sharing your beer stories. Thanks for sharing your beers. Mm. All the fans uh, say no, no. Please don't count me. Okay. <laughs> no, don't do that. I agree. There you go. <clears throat> um, I was going to say, Disco, you drank anything good this week? Because I have not. I have been... Um, I can do a review of Thames Water, um, if you'd like. <laughs> uh, I've been fairly light this week. What did I have this week? Um, I, I don't know. Yeah, I've been fairly light this week. I did... Um, um oh, this this is the best thing I've drunk this week. This is absolutely I, I I should stop saying it. This is bloody phenomenal to be honest with you. Um cherry and chocolate pastry stout and a lager, which is insane. Uh little bit smokiness. Uh what did I have this week? 
I didn't do that many reviews this week. I kind of run out of time and words, to be honest. Um, mm. Yeah, no, well, for the game the other day, I just had more of that uh, Brew York Karma Chameleon because, like we said with Rob last week, does it taste better because it's free or does it taste really nice? I think it tastes really nice. It's a really mm. easy drinking pale ale. And I'll just go to the... Even on Wednesday when I was playing darts online, it's like I'll just reach into the cupboard and what can I get in the stash? I just had one of them, to be honest. Yeah. You, you've got to have a stop here. How do you how do you play darts online? So for the last year, what we've been doing, my darts team, I play a, a darts team in London with my Argyle mates. Basically, all we do is I point the laptop at the dartboard and we all go on to Zoom. So you can see the board. Everybody else does that. And I, where my dartboard is upstairs, I can I can stand in front of it and like be in front of the camera. So we have a little chat. Somebody does the scoring two of us play or we play like a team game so you can I mean it's done on trust because you could fucking blag well you're not going to blag 180 every time because nobody would believe us because we average like 60 to 80 every every round like but yeah so we can all see roughly what the scores are you put it you pin it so that you can see the board and then we just have a chat you know we just like we do a couple of hours of darts it's brilliant get yourself a dartboard join in mate Mm, yeah, no. <laughs> when, uh, yeah, so when Sarah says, like, so, yeah, you like I do it in the pub. I just stand in front of a dartboard and throw the darts at the board, and sometimes they hit. When Mrs. B and I first bought a house together, we were in the charity shop looking at all those years ago. Yeah, <laughs> and I spotted it. I spotted a dartboard. I thought, aha. There we go. Let's have that. And she said, you know, she said, I think that would look really good in your shed. <laughs> your four foot by four foot shed. Yeah, need, needless to say, I still don't have a dartboard. Well, to be fair, I bought a dartboard, well, actually when I moved in here, what, five years ago, six years ago? Yeah, six years ago. I bought a dartboard from Argos because I thought, hey, I've got my own walls now. I can put a dartboard up on the wall and practice for like when we was going to the pub on a Monday night. Yeah. And it sat there behind the cupboard for five years because I've got the DIY skills of a snail. And um, when 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 the first lockdown hit, like my mate Mark was like, oh, we can do darts on Zoom. I've got a dartboard on the wall. Let's everybody in. Like, for the first three weeks, there was just two of them playing darts. Because I still hadn't got my fucking dartboard on the wall. And eventually, last May, I actually nailed or screwed my dartboard to the bleeding wall and started playing darts um, and having beers. So darts and beers, great combination. Um, that, that's one of my biggest achievements in lockdown is actually screwing my dartboard to the wall and playing bloody darts, to be honest. Mm. I was gonna say, it's not a case of not having a skill to screw your dartboard to the wall. It's not having the inclination or motivation or, you know, anything else to do it. Well, you know, it is, it is basically terrible. I mean, I, I've got all the inclination to do DIY. And, you know, I used to have all the tools as well. Do you remember when I worked at the tool I place and I put the shelves yeah. up and they fell down three weeks later? But no, I haven't got any of the skills to do. I, I've got the inclination and the tools, but just none of the ability. To be fair, my dartboard hasn't fallen off the wall yet, so I can't be doing uh, too bad. This is it true? <laughs> next yeah, thing, yeah. build the bar. Build the bar well, is next up there on the level of a ten-year-old. Sorry, James, go on. I said you you are up there on the level of a ten year old when it comes to DIY. Um, no, I'm up there on the level of a forty year old. You can't actually have the ability to do DIY. I was going to do the bar like last year. I, I'll put the bar in. Like, do you remember? Like, you know, twenty years ago, mates had a bar and it was like you had to take it out, and we're like, oh, I got it. Now I've finally got an entire room that I can build a bar in, and I've put a cabinet against the wall and. I was going to build like a load of shelves in the background and put all the cans on it. And I never got around to buying the tool that I needed to do it. 
it will get there. It will happen eventually. I just say I have the DIY skills of a snail. That means it takes five years to do anything. Well, let's, uh, let's hope you uh, you build that shelf before Rasco and Disco go off the air. <laughs> or if we go over to oh, there's a great quote, Rasco. Or before we go over to YouTube, I put last week's show up on YouTube. And uh, Adam from Mersey Beers, bless him, he, he put a great comment about how, um, yeah, this it needs to be reversed because I just bung it straight up on YouTube. And he sent me a, a he sent he put a comment on it um, about how there's a there's a program you can use to reverse it when you upload it. So I've got to look into this one, look into that for this one, because obviously when we put it on YouTube, all the writing's back to front because it's back to front because Instagram don't mirror image the camera. Uh, and I said well maybe we might be going over to YouTube because we talked about maybe doing a year of Instagram yeah. so we can show 49 tonight show 50 next week if it happens is our special guest and then do we just go to show 52 and then just go to YouTube and then everything will be the right way round and we can like show no. be the right way round and people can read it or what I don't know so and Adam said, Adam said, what will happen first? You guys coming over to YouTube or me going on to Instagram? <laughs> so Adam, if you are watching this afterwards on YouTube, come to Instagram and we'll go to YouTube. <laughs> maybe. Yes, maybe, maybe. Well, fellas, uh, I think I'm going to tell you my plan for migrating um, in the next couple of weeks. It's going to happen this summer. Okay. Um, but I'm not against there's, it. No, but I don't, it's bizarrely one I don't want to have a production meeting about online. Oh, no, obviously, obviously. James, you'll come, you'll come and visit us on YouTube if we go to YouTube Lives, won't you? No, of course. Ah, super, that man. There we go. The team's all okay. here. My mate Steve Tower has just joined us. Hey, thanks for popping in, Steve. Cheers. What are you drinking? So I've got a mouthful of crisps. Cheers, Steve. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying um, yourself. I hope everything's going well. And, um, now, you know, yeah. Before we go, the last topic of conversation, so, uh, here's a question for you. Which group, musical group, did the official song for Euro 96? <sighs> um... I don't know, was there an official song or was it just a couple of unofficial ones? There, there was an official one. I suspect you'll be hitting the laptop when I tell you the answer. Go on, have a pop. Well, I'm not going to go for the two obvious ones because I know one was unofficial and I don't know if the other, the other one wasn't official. It was just a pop song that became the official anthem. Say it, say it. 96, I don't know. I've got no idea. Was it Ant and Deck? Was that a bit later? They did it. They did a song. Ann and Deck did oh, an yeah, official yeah, yeah, song. It was like, we're on the ball, we're on the ball. I think that was a bit later, actually. We're on the ball, we're on the ball. It was fucking terrible, but very catchy. Mm. Um, so, no, I don't know what the official song of 96. I don't, it wasn't Three Lions, was it? No. Well, that's, it wasn't Diamond that's... Lights. That was early, wasn't it? No. Diamond, when was Diamond Lights? Oh, Diamond Lights was much earlier. That was blinking, what's his name? Steve... Uh, Chris Waddle. Waddle and, uh, Chris Waddle and um, Glenn Waddle. Waddle. Yeah. Waddle and Waddle. It was much earlier. Because hmm. I... I've, 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 I've saw it. Yeah. Into the pot charts. Yeah. That, that wasn't a football song. That was just them trying to do, like, pop music, I think. So I, I bumped into... I bumped into uh, Glenn Hill, Um As you do. As, as one does. In the cigar lounge, the cigar piano bar of the Four Seasons <laughs> in in uh, in in Doha. Well, no. To be got... fair, that's not that. It's not that random because you did live in Doha for several years. So yeah, like, oh, yeah. But, you know. Uh, and I did frequent the uh, cigar lounge and piano bar. Uh, of course, you did. Of course, you did. Why? Martini Mondays, mate. Martini Mondays. <laughs> they had this idea 
where if they did three for one martinis, that they would get a crowd of, you know, three people each drinking a single martini. Groups of three people <laughs> instead of just all of us going in and ha- having three martinis and another three martinis and another three. <laughs> well, like double fisting martinis out of you, like, yeah. <laughs> Literally triple fisting martinis, yeah. <laughs> it was messy, messy, messy. <laughs> Brilliant. Did God, you mean he, was, he doesn't drink, though? So, Ben Huddle, Martini one day, we oh. turned up, and some of these chandeliers had some, you know, diamond patterning things in them. And so I, I, I had a bit of a chat. I was like, look at these. Hey, hey Glenn. Hey, Glenn. Hey, Glenn. Glenn. Hey, Glenn. Look at these. Diamond lights. <laughs> look at these. Look at these. Diamond lights, eh? Diamond lights, isn't it? Diamond lights. Hey, hey. How about that? As a committed Christian, I'm sure he forgave you for that discreet transgression, no? Yeah, I'm not, 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 not sure he has. To be honest, was he was he, was he a bit of a grumpy fucker? Was he? <laughs> it was I don't like, think he wanted to be reminded of it because it wasn't. I mean, it was a pop song, but it wasn't like universally well liked song. I don't think. I mean, it was like catchy, but no, it was, sure it, was it was terrible. There was no no to worry about it. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and here I was trying to get some bants out of it at one in the morning. I mean, it's 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 you know I love a pun and a good bit of play on the English language, and you know, I would have loved it, but I, obviously hey. I don't think hey, he would Glenn, have wanted to. Hey, Glenn, Glenn, look at that! Look at that! Hey, Glenn, hey, 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 look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Hey, hey, hey! Nice, nice! Hey, look at that! Good diamond lights! Hey. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm a wit, it turns out. At least half of one. Yes. I was gonna say that. So back to my uh, question, guesses at who did the official Euro ninety six song. Oh yeah. I know what you're going I can't remember. I can't honestly can't remember. Go on, tell you'll have to tell us because I can't remember. Simply red. Fuck um. off. <laughs> Oh, oh, talking of which, here's a great, uh, what a great segue, it's not, but Simply Red, fronted by Mick Hucknall, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you saw this week, but you know, like, esteemed, esteemed uh, YouTube beer reviewer Raggy from, in, in Nottingham, Hucknall's a town in Nottingham, just north of, uh, uh, just north of Nottingham, uh, which is the home of Lincoln Green Brewing, and this week they invited him to their brewery to brew a beer. And he's actually got a beer with, uh, I think it's Raggy's Golden Ale coming out. So uh, nice. he took the day off work, had to be done. He went and brewed the beer himself. So joining joining several esteemed beer reviewers with a, a beer named after them. Well, who's joining him? No, no, joining a whole list of beer reviewers, that have ah. been, including us with Disco Duck. Right, yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, was this actually named after you folks? Um, yes and no. So, sort of. Uh, Mad Yank, my local brewery, uh, Grant contacted me and said, we've got, he, he, he said, what would Disco do? We've got a bunch of cherry puree or a bunch of apricot, apricot puree and we're thinking of doing a sour. Which do you think we should use? And I said... I like apricot, but I prefer it in a pale ale. I think you should definitely do a cherry sour. I think it'd be more like like you sweet cherries. If you do a sweet cherries, balance it up with drink, yeah. Ah, yeah. And he went, fair enough, we'll do it. And he didn't he didn't tell me, but then like however many weeks later, he's got he brought out his beer, Disco Duck, a sweet cherry and white chocolate sour. And he said, we're calling it Disco Duck. And he put my name on the label. Well, like the name Disco. And he said, our, 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 our friend Disco. And I'm like, and then, and then they dropped me two, two bottles of the beer up. And I'm like, this is amazing. And it was a really, I mean, I'm not a big fan of ours. I told him that. It was a really nice beer. 
really nice, like oh, cherry sour, yeah. like little sweetness, a bit of chocolate. And mm. the, the aroma, the chocolate, white chocolate aroma was brilliant, fantastic. And obviously I'm keeping the bottle because it says our friend Disco of Rasco and Disco Beer Review. So. Fantastic. Yeah. Why, why wouldn't you? Love it. Yeah. Love why it. wouldn't you keep that beer? That's fantastic. Hopefully they did say they'll do another batch. So hopefully they'll do another one this year. This like, well, the cherry harvest is like May. I've got, I've got cherry trees in my garden. Um, well, send them along to the brewery, mate. Send them along to the brewery, get them, get them brewed. Well, they're very young trees, so there was only a few cherries. But next year, maybe I can, maybe I can send my own cherries to the brewery to brew my own beer. I'm getting the hop project going this year, hopefully. Do you remember we used to do the hop project? Oh, I was, was going to ask you about growing your own hops because obviously I've got a bit of space. You've got a bit of space. Did you not do that? If you put your put your hop plants in, uh, they're, they're in a hop. I'm in a pot. I've got a a hop plant in a pot in a hop. I'll start again. I have yeah. a hop in a pot. <laughs> I left. Do they two... take that long? Do they? Do you have to grow no. them first and then like spread them out? I didn't know what he said. Do you have to put them in a pot first and then, like, you have to, they like, take a couple of years to kind of, like, expand no. or something? No, you can stick the rhizome straight in the actual ground yeah. and they'll grow and it'll be great. And, it, and they're best off in the ground rather than in the pot. Right. I just haven't worked out where I'm going to put mine yet. I have to do that. I was going to do that this year, but I've not got a garden sorted. So I think, yeah, hops, grow some hops. Got cherries, I've got apples. Happy days. So at Walsham's, in Walthamstow, when I lived previously in Walthamstow. Oh, um, yeah, thanks, <laughs> James. James has gone for Burton. James, come back to us, son. Oh, 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 can you hear me? Definitely the phone that's fallen over, and not James. So. Oh, oh, fuck, now my twig has fallen over. Oh. Um, right, yeah. yeah. How's that? Is that all right? You got me? No. Yeah, you, you, you landscaped again. How's that? You're, you're good. You're good. So, yeah. So, in Walthamstow, we had um, a hop growing cooperative right, where, we, where we all grew, we, all, we all bought hot plants in the spring grew them over the course of the summer excuse me grew them over the course of the summer and in the autumn we harvested them and did a big uh, big brew big green hopped brew and then sold it through local pubs so it was, if ELB did it, East London Brewery did it. So yeah. what I want to do is get in touch with the brewery here and ask them if they want to get behind it and then get a whole community project going for everyone growing hops next year. Superb. They do work best in the second and third years. But uh, still we're... Together, something for next year. Hmm. Well, you have to plant them in like like March or April or something, just to yeah, March. Yeah. Well, so I missed this. The first year that I was quite keen on joining it, my my birthday's became in March. First year I was quite keen on joining it. Claire told me that my wife had told me that she had bought me uh, a stake in in this year's project. Fantastic. Yeah. And but she's been a bit busy, so they couldn't deliver the thing, so I had to go and pick it up. And when I got there, it turned out that not only did I have to pick up my present, I also had to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, she just signed you up. Yeah, she bought me a present at all, for fuck's sake. So, yeah, but that's been like five or six years now down the line. And, um, yeah, yeah, I've got some good good harvests. Last year's immense. 
Superb. I'm just going to squeeze one more beer in. I know we're sort of thinking about finishing up because we've been on an hour and a half, but I'm just going to squeeze an espresso porter in because why wouldn't you at this time of night? Like it. Like it. Over in Richmond, uh, Rituals at Dawn. I've had this one in the stash for far too long, so I thought I'd bust it out tonight because I do love a good coffee porter, as, as do you boys. You know what? You know what I've just remembered? What I've just remembered is I put a beer in a freezer. Oh, shit, mate. Go and get it out, bud. You've been on it now. <laughs> Rascal, are you okay? You still there? You seem to have frozen on our screen, mate. No, I'm still here. He just I'm just still not moving. He's a... What do you think? Is a good idea to do a... Ooh. To be fair, it's only it's only four and a half percent. It's only four and a half percent espresso porter. So, so, but there's some good coffee. Again, coming off the back of that dark lager, there's some. It's really smooth, really good coffee flavors. Nice bitterness, but not too much. Um, yeah, a really smooth espresso porter, coffee porter. Can you can you feel the coffee grain in it? Can you feel the coffee coffee Not well. No, you can taste the coffee. It's it's just got that nice kind of. Um, coffee flavor. Like I always say that it like caffeine doesn't really um, hit me in that way. I like mm -hmm. morning to wake up, but I can have a coffee and go to bed. So, um, but yeah, no, it's nice and smooth coffee porter. It's right. not durious as like some coffee stouts are. Yeah, um, but it's, it's a really good, really solid coffee flavor, coffee aroma. Uh, really drinkable porter. No, oh, that's what you need, mate. Uh, mm. it, it would be pretty bad if it wasn't drinkable. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, I thought it would be okay in the freezer. Mm, well, I don't know. I suspect he stopped by the toilet at the same time. So, you've not had that many beers this week. I have not had a drop since last week's show which I was uh, fairly hung over from uh, next day. After the show, um, I ended up watching a film, and I did the Brew By Numbers 85. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, you which, did that? that was and, dipper, wasn't it? Yes, it was. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful drink, honestly. Um, did, you did you not do it on a um, review? I did do a review. I haven't done many on review. There's another thing I want to chat to you about, actually. Yeah. Um, but actually, my bit of news I should have mentioned at the beginning of the show, I'd like to say thank you for Wild Beer Co. for actually highlighting one of our reviews. Um, yeah. You renewed my faith in Instagram, actually. People are actually reading these things. Um, it was a review you wrote, Disco. Well done for you. You want to talk about that for a bit? Yeah, it wasn't even a review I wrote. It was a review I quoted. Right? So it was a review that I used and I quoted and credited. And they, I've obviously seen it. And it was what I done last week. So it was a beer called, um, oh, here it is. It was a beer from Wild Beer called Brett Brett 21, right? Hmm. Uh, which is a, a dipper with Brettanomyces, so it's quite it was slightly sour. Um, but it was really strange. So I I bought this um, when I bought the um, Oak Age Millionaire from 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 Wild Beer. Mm. And I listen, I gave I gave my mate Brett a can of this. I've got a mate called Brett, right? And he runs, he's he's part of the scout group, and he runs a, an indie choir. So. Uh, and obviously he's not been able to meet over lockdown, but a bunch of just random people meet up and sing indie songs in a choir fashion in the Trinity on a Thursday night. So I thought, you know, just to say thank you for Brett, I got, I got this can. It's got his name on it. All right, Brett and the is a fairly regular, common thing used in brewing to, to sour beers. So I gave him it and I said, see what you think of it. And he came up with this amazing review and I've, it's the second time I've featured him, right? Because he comes up with some amazing words, like very arty, very, not flowery, but expansive words on it. So I quoted him and, and, and said I agree with him. And it was like, 
it's got it's it's a very it's, it's got a very grapefruity kind of bitter outset and then suddenly it disappears and he highlighted it really well so i quoted him and wildbeer quoted me and i said like yeah it was actually my mate brett yeah he's genuinely called brett <laughs> so he loved brett brett not just because he's got his literally got his name all over it that's why we got him a can um but um yeah it's, it's a sour slightly sour dipper uh and he loved it i quite liked it actually um but yeah massive thanks to wild beer for quoting us and, and we we quoting us on their um instagram feed i was quite i was a shocked and be quite pleased obviously mm. Mm. to have somebody like wild beer say we enjoyed this review from rasco and disco beer review so we should have invited them on the show hmm. what did you now follow um, maybe that could happen that may, yeah, I don't see a reason why not um, and fa thank you to everyone who has actually started following us this week it's been actually Absolutely. quite a good week we've got we're getting a few more from breweries themselves now and that's oh, just yeah, that's generally cool. nice be back in a second that's just nice recognition for what we do and what we're here to do um and, you know, we get more acceptance from our fellow beer reviewers who just spend their time just looking up beers. Um, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, hopefully one day we actually meet in person, you know, instead of liking and retweeting or republishing and this. We can actually have a beer in person, face-to-face, -face, and exchange notes and agree. Or disagree or not. Anyway. Jim, the cameraman, slash journalist, slash uh, media consultant, slash, uh, well, you were meant to be sports correspondents, but you kind of failed in that regard today. Um, yeah, I was, I was drinking. I wasn't watching sports. Ah, right. Yeah, of course. Uh, that, that's old, same old one. I was going to say. Um, Tell me. What is your favourite sour? My favourite sound? Sour. Sour beer. Oh. oh. I'm well, asking like this, this with intent because a sour has got a nomination of beer of the year from me and this is groundbreaking. This is... <laughs> this, this is this. Yeah. Okay, well, a couple of years ago, I'm going to try and sort of sort this up. A couple of years ago, um, Craig did a lemon sour. And really, if you're going for a sour, you want the sour, most sourest thing you can have. Most sourest? That's not the real word. If you want a sour. <laughs> What the most sour thing you can have, and surely the most sour thing you can have is lemon. Mm. And so this was like a, a I think you called it a triple, a triple lemon sour, and God, it was sharp. But for, and it was I think it was six percent, seven percent. But for a summer's, a summer's. Sunday afternoon on Hackney Rick watching the canals go past canal boats go past. Mm. <laughs> it was it was suitable. However, that's made me think of the first sour that really turned me on to sours. I was in Bruges with my <laughs> wife and I I had a I had a an apple sour beer, and I'd had a whole. I got. A, I bought a whole. I like a pint of it. Because in Belgium and other places, you know, you get offered a half or a third or two thirds, whatever. I bought. A, I bought a large. I bought a pint. Stupidly, because I got a first swig. Damn it! And it was really. It's really sharp apple sour flavour and it was so strong 
and it was a real ooh, up the back of the top teeth and oh fuck me there's no way I could possibly drink this but I'd also spent about £10 on the pint so I was like right okay I'll, I've got to fucking drink this and so I got through it and about halfway through the pint I was like this is fucking awful but I think I can make it to the end And by the time I got to the bottom of the pint, I was like, that was fucking amazing. I want another one of them. That was brilliant. Apple, super, super sour, super weird. I want more of that. Um, and it was a Goza, which I'll, I can put the link on from the um, thing. It's about 14%. It's about a 14% Goza. Apple basing. And that turned my whole life around when it comes to beer drinking. That is a great moment. Okay, now I can drink sours. That's a great moment. That is what you call a beer discovery. Mm. There you go. Thank, thanks for sharing that memory with us, man. That's, that's something. Um, yeah, I was going to say, if you keep an eye on our beer of the year list, you'll find... That a sour from Pomona Island um, has actually made it onto my list, uh, and it's it's it reminds me actually, you know that like that Dutch beer we met, found at Ely, it changes your conception of things, and it's mm. changed your conception. It's not really like a sour. I mean, it's tolerable for me, um, so I won't reveal too much of it, but it, it's you know it is something else. And it's, I have tried other sours to make sure it's not a fluke, um, and it's a unique. It's a unique sour, if I'm honest. Hey, anyway, I'll shut up because I, I don't want to spoil it for beer of the year. Here's a bombshell question for you, because you know we like to have some history and you know contention in our beer of the year list. And, and I asked last year about what, or the year before. I asked whether I'm allowed to. Play. A beer on my list I've not even tried yet. My last for a beer of the year. Yes, I've not even tried yet. This year, am I allowed to put a beer on my beer of the year list because I put it in a beer cocktail? And it was phenomenal. Can I put the beer cocktail on my list as opposed to the beer itself? A beer you made yourself. No, a beer I made into a beer cocktail. Can I put the beer cocktail on my list rather than the beer itself? Because it contains beer. Because, quite frankly, when I did, I did a series of beer cocktails the other week. I put them on Instagram. I thought it would be kind of fun. Because, again, this comes off the back of talking about sours, because I say I'm not a big fan of sours. So I had a whole bunch of sours. And there's a lot of echo. Or is that just me? Feels like my phone's underwater. Yeah, it does sound like that. I was just testing my earphones and then make my sure vote, it's not my earphones. My um, vote would be say, go for it. Yeah. Okay, so there was a, there was a beer for beer cocktail night. It was a, it was it was the tomato sour from Perivale. And I had I had rhubarb and ginger vodka, the soy sauce kind of mix, and the tomato sour, and it tasted quite frankly amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm going to say do it because I want to see if you've got the balls to nominate the winner. <laughs> It's just, it's only occurred to me because you were talking about sours that that stood out and that one stood out for me. So, yeah, let me think about that. Think about that. All right. All right, fellas, I think we should wrap up now. It's been wonderful. Yeah. Um, mostly because me and Crouch is finished. And, you know, match of the day is about the finish as well. So, um it so must, be, must be getting on. James, and James E, thank you so much for joining and uh, get some beer stories out tonight. You've been fantastic as always. You're um, always very welcome. 
Or well, may as well stay awake. <laughs> well, it must have been that interesting that you stayed awake. You haven't, we haven't bored you into submission. So, fair play for that. Well, thank, you Rasko, by the way. thank you for Rasco for, for, even though he's been on his deathbed all week, drinking only water and tea. Uh, but you made a show anyway. Good, good on you, sir. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you for everybody else in the comments. Phil Smith. Craig from Kent Beer Reviews, uh, Harry from Blue Nose who joined in earlier, Sarah, everybody else who's joined in, and anybody else if you're watching on YouTube after when we put this up during the week, thank you very much, and cheers. Have a good week. See you next Saturday. Anything else, Rasko? No, that's it. Thank you, everyone. Thanks to all the followers this week. Um, again, it's much appreciated. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Absolutely, and um, believe enough to lose control. Join in, have fun. Adios. <laughs> Keep smiling.